In today's video, we are talking about the Carolina rig tips and tricks for when you're using this technique while bing fishing. This is your first time here. Welcome, my name is Chris. This is Lifeaholics Fishing. This is where I will be bringing you content that features the best that the Northeast region has to offer as far as bass fishing goes. Tips, tricks, product reviews, and more. Location guides. And if that is the kind of content that you get value from, please consider subscribing. All right, so most of you guys probably think Carolina rig, so spinning rod. Yes, mostly that is true because it is more of a finesse technique, but you can use this on your bait casters. Just dial down, make sure that you have a mono leader tied on because you want that floating line. Mono floats. So real quick before we get into actually tying on your line and everything, let's talk about preparations. First thing you're going to need is you're going to need a barrel swivel. Right there, two O's on either side. I like using a little smaller for myself. That's just my personal preference. This one's a KVD. Uh, make sure I will link everything in the description below, size, everything I'm using today. Now, after that, you want to get yourself your leader. Like I said, mono. I use 8 to 12 pound mono for my leader. And because it's cold, fall transition, you're going to be using anywhere between a 6 inch to an 18 inch leader. If it was warmer, hotter days, you'd be using anywhere between an 18 inch to 4 foot leader. And that would work just as well. But with the colder days, shallow waters, 6 inch to 18 inch. Personally, I go with right around 12 inches. All right, so go ahead. You're gonna tie your leader onto that line. Make sure that you use a light wire hook. Personally, right now I am using a two watt light wire EWG and I'm pairing it with my Obsidian Nico Bass Worm. Love these worms. Look at that, it has a paddle tail. They are actually hollow, very squishy very very elasticy very durable believe me you will not be disappointed with these you can go ahead and tie these right up hook it up weedless texas style like you normally would just make sure that whatever you do the biggest thing that you need to know when doing a carolina rig light wire light doesn't mean small light wire you can use a five aught you can use eight inch worms as long as you're using a buoyant one and a light wire so that bait is able to freely float and get all that action in because that's your goal here the weight's going to be on the bottom your bait's going to be up here especially coming through so let's tie on to our actual line all right so let's talk about main line i'm running this on 12 pound mono for my regular line that's on my spinning reel I'm using my Shakespeare old ugly stick, very old, old combo, but it's still, it's trusty, it's worthy, and it's great for me. So all you need, my personal preference, first tie on a bobber stopper. This will be able to put you in control of exactly how much wiggle room your weights and beads have on your Carolina rig. I have a problem when casting out, it usually likes to go way up the line, it messes me up, has way too much out. With the bobber stopper, you control how much that little gap is, it's able to move. And you want it to move, definitely want it to move, you don't want it to be pinched there, because you want that racket coming through. Especially if you're using crawfish on your Carolina rig, which I do and I probably will be in this video. Crawfish, when they come across the rocks, that's how the bass see them. Their pinchers and everything, they make a clicking and a clacking onto the rocks and the bottom and the bedrock. That's how the bass hear them. They don't see them all over their place. No, they listen for them and that's how they're able to pinpoint them down by that vibration, that clicking sound. So having it on a Carolina rig is definitely dynamite. All right, so now we're about to tie on to our line. Got the bobber stop next. Now for shallow fishing for fall transition from the bank, I like to use a nice, an egg weight. So what it looks like, nice barrel one small. This is only an eighth ounce here. It's not that heavy. Sometimes if I'm hitting the river or creek, go up to quarter. Maybe I'll even use a bullet if there's a lot of rocks. But where I'm fishing today, it's mostly grass, nice clean vegetation coming through the bottom. So a nice egg weight is perfect. Next, I add two different beads. Usually some people just add a glass. Sometimes they'll have a brass weight. Sometimes 
they'll have a brass bead. Personally, I just go with one glass, one plastic. And the reason for that, you want a plastic before your glass bead. Because if you hit a hard fish, a big fish, which you most likely are able to do on this Carolina rig, a hard hook set is going to shatter that glass bead, even with that little bit of weight. So definitely plastic, then glass. And now let's tie on to our leader. Before we tie on to our line, I have a question for you. Do you use the Carolina rig right now for bank fishing? And if so, what is your favorite bait or plastic to use on the end of it? Let me know in the comments below. Now, the reason I said you have to make sure you tie your leader first is because the strongest knot, the knot that I like to use is a Palomar. And if you try to put your, your barrel swivel on first, you're not gonna be able to tie a Palomar. So now that I have that all set up the right way, let's go ahead. You take your eye, put it right through, and tie your basic Palomar. Now here's a little tip, make sure wet the line before you cinch it all the way down. It doesn't matter whether you're using mono, fluoro, you should especially be doing this for braid. Wet it first so that way you don't get that friction heat to weaken your knot when you're going to tie down and pull tight because that will weaken your knot in the long run. All right, so now we're nice and tied up. We're gonna cut off our tag end here. And now let's look at our end product here. So I'm gonna bring down, I like to put my bobber stopper about right there, leaving it anywhere between two to four inches of play. I get enough, but still it's not a lot to come way up my line and mess me up later. Then there's my eye, my glass bead there is going to protect that knot. Go down 12 inch and bam. Now I highly, highly recommend using a very buoyant bait. This here, the Nico Bass Worm, the most buoyant I've ever seen. Not only that, you have the option later with these little holes here in the side. See those holes? Should be able to, yep, there it is. You can add some little weights, pebbles from the ground. I personally, I'll throw in a little couple of sinkers or even a couple of little, little, little beads. And that'll give it that rattle extra presentation especially in dirty water well i'm all tied up there we go everything's good i'm gonna start making some casts i'm already seeing some top water action but i'm going to be using this for a few and if this doesn't get me hit in a couple of casts i'm actually going to be changing over and using the nico craw because right now fall definitely the best time to be using some craws before we get back to the video, if you are getting value from this content so far, please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you're notified of all my new videos when they're released. Also, if you could hit that like button if you're enjoying it. And also, please share with a friend if you think that they would also find some value from this content so that way I could help teach them and improve their overall experience when out on the water. All right, so right now I found a pristine, pristine location on this pond I'm fishing. I'm on the shoreline in the tip where the, the wind is just smacking against the shoreline. That's where you want to be. Now from the bank, it's kind of hard thrown into that wind, but believe me, you want to be here. On a boat, it's a little easier. You can get back over here and just keep shooting into it. But from the bank, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but do not give up. You want to be here. That's where the bass are going to be. And you're going to be having a better chance of getting bit because of all that action on the top of the water. Let's take a couple casts, see how we do. Now make sure that when your Carolina rig first hits the water, let it fall on slack line, so that way your plastic gets up and does its action. And then as you're bringing it through, simple little actions, just that little bit. You, right there, just shake your rod. You can even put your hand in your pocket and just shake and believe me it's making that worm and that plastic move and giving that extra action that will help you get bit all right i'm gonna switch this camera around real quick i want to show you because the water is nice and clear here especially right here by the shore i want to show you what it looks like to the fish and how buoyant these nikos really are i'm reeling in and right here in the water 
just watch out. I want you to see just how buoyant these worms actually are compared to most. Now I challenge you guys, go out, take your favorite bass worm, Sanko, see if it does this. If it does, please comment below and let me know. If not, then what are you doing? Go over there and get yourself some. All right, now here, there it is. It's coming up, it's floating. I'll even show you again, ready? Now I'm letting it float, just sink down. Now, right there, it's not deep enough, but I'm gonna slowly bring it in and ready. See that tail coming up. That right there is proof of just how buoyant these Nico bass worms are. That's how they float when put on a nice light wire hook. Now, I actually, like I said, I am switching on the Carolina rig and putting on one of the Nico Cross. This is them. I absolutely love, love these guys. This color is absolutely amazing. In the description below will be the link and the color, exact everything. Still using the same size hook as I used for the bass worm. Still that size 2. It's a VNC hook. Yeah, light, light wire, extra wide gap hook, all right? Now, a tip before you actually put on the craw. Take your fingers and wet them a bit and then wet your hook. This will help when putting on these craws. They're very, very durable and the plastic can be pretty thick and kind of difficult to get through at times. But that just means that they last that much longer. Bring it right through. As you see the stub right here, that's where you're coming out at. Come right through, bring it all the way up, and because you wet your hook, you're able to bring it all the way up, bring it right on to the eye of that wide gap. Bring it up, cover up that knot, all right? As you see, you're good. And then, I go like this. Fold it down, let's see. Fold it down, and right there, is where you put your hook in, right in the bottom, right at the top of its top of its ribs right there, above the legs. Right there, bring it up. Now you can penetrate all the way through or just keep it completely weedless. It's up to you. Personally, I bring it up and I do what is called skinning it. As you see, the nice groove it has here to hold those hooks in. I bring it right up and in that groove, and look, you can't even see the hook. It's perfect. You have your knot hidden. This is completely free and able to move around, do its thing, but because you're right there in that groove and you skinned it right into the plastic a bit, such a higher hookup percentage ratio, so you're not missing any bites. Unfortunately, here at this spot, just isn't doing it that today. They're hitting top water, but not so much on the bottom. I am really shallow. I did get a couple of bites, but I just got broke off. It's about to be dark, so I'm not gonna be able to film anymore. But here, here's a clip from my last trip out, Carolina rig, and I was using a bass worm from Nico. Check it out. Yeah, what's the crankbait do? There's this new, uh, well, a couple new from Six Sense and Thirteen Fishing. The one from Thirteen. There we go. Mm. down. Huh? Oh. Yep. Keepable? It's gotta be 12 inches. You know that, right? Yep. 
No, that's a large mouth. No. Huh? Oh, wait, yeah, 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 it's a large mouth. Relax, dude. And what, the point one for the weight? Well, yeah. One point one and a half. Well, I hope you guys found value from this content today. I really hope you guys were able to get out there, try these tips and tricks. Definitely switch up the Carolina rig. Don't be afraid to try new things. It's not always a finesse technique. You can use this on your casting reels. So please don't be afraid to change things up. Try something new. You might just be surprised at what comes from it. As always, guys, thank you for watching again. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that button below with the little bell next to it. If you like this video, hit the like button. Share with a friend that you think might find value from this as well. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.